Straight Talk is made possible in part through the support of Nika IBEW Local 48, Azumano Travel, and by the Oregon Community Foundation. New battles in the fight over gay marriage. The largest number of signatures ever um, delivered in a referendum in Washington state. This week, opponents in Washington submitted signatures in their effort to overturn the state's new law legalizing gay marriage. Are ready for a fight as far as we're concerned. While supporters gear up to preserve the law. And a big step forward in the challenge to a California law banning gay marriage. A federal appeals court refuses to reconsider its ruling setting up a potential Supreme Court showdown over what one side sees as a fundamental right, the other as a challenge to the institution of marriage. From News Channel 8, this is Straight Talk. Good evening, and thanks for joining us tonight on Straight Talk. I'm Reggie Key. Laurel Porter is off this week. Well, gay marriage has been a divisive issue, as you know, for much of the past decade. But in the last week alone, a number of developments have shined a new light on this topic. First, here in the Northwest, opponents of Washington's gay marriage law delivered signatures hoping to force a statewide vote on that law. And then the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals refused to reconsider a ruling that overturned part of California's law that bans gay marriage. Here to talk about these new developments and the national battle over this issue, Teresa Harkey. She is the communications director for the Oregon Family Council. That's a group that opposes same-sex marriage. We also have Thomas Wheatley. He's joining us. He's a director of the organizing, uh, or director of organizing, I should say, for the national advocacy group Freedom to Marry. That's a group that supports same-sex marriage. Right. Welcome to both of you. Thank so you. as we speak, Right, they're counting these signatures in Washington State, and the group that opposed same-sex marriage in Washington State gathered about twice as many signatures as is needed, according to state law, to get this on the ballot in November. It looks like it's going to go that way. I want to show you a poll that was recently taken in Washington State, and it shows where this breaks down according to people who respond to the survey. 54% in this survey that was taken recently say that same-sex marriage should be legal in Washington. 33% say that it should be illegal. So that's what's happening right here in the Northwest. Let's see what's happening nationwide. We're looking at several different polls here taken over the past couple of weeks and months. The most recent is in the middle there from CNN, just released this week. And as you can see, 54% from NBC and the Wall Street Journal and CNN, and 53% from ABC and the Washington Post. A national poll, that's the number of people who say they support gay marriage in this country. If I had been talking to you about this, let's say, four or five years ago, we would have probably seen a reverse of those numbers, which would make your position in the minority back then and yours in the majority, that's flipped. I want to get a, 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 a reaction from you guys of why you think that's changed so much in the country. Well, I think that, you know, polling on this issue, part of the problem, and I'm sure you guys have seen this too, is that historically it just doesn't poll accurately. And that's not necessarily because people lie in polls or, you know, or maybe they change their mind. Um, I think some of it has to do with this is such an emotion, emotionally charged issue that a lot of times people don't feel comfortable really talking about how they feel about it. Uh, if you have somebody calling your home, you don't know who that is. And, you know, if you come out against same-sex marriage, you can get, you know, people name call or criticize. And it's very difficult to take a position uh, opposing same-sex marriage. So I think that has something to do with how, and that's, that's becoming, I think, less acceptable to oppose same-sex marriage as far as the way that culture treats you. So I think people are less likely to come out and actually say they oppose it if they do. What do you think, Thomas? Well, you know, I, I think the research shows uh, and experience shows, you can feel it, right, when you talk to people, that more and more every day Americans are coming together and thinking about their values, thinking about the people they know in their lives, the gay and lesbian people they've met at school, at church, um, at work, in the neighborhood, and coming to realize that um, supporting the freedom to marry is in line with our values. And I think that's being reflected in poll after poll after poll. It's not just a single outlier where we see strong majority of support. In fact, we see repeatedly national polls as well as polls here in the Pacific Northwest showing that more and more people are embracing the idea of allowing caring, committed, loving couples who are in long-term relationships to enjoy the 
affirmation, the protections that come with marriage. I want to get back to Teresa's point in a moment about this disparity that we see between what people say in polls and how they actually vote when this is on a referendum. We'll get to that in a minute. But I also want to show you how this new CNN poll breaks down, because I found this rather interesting. It goes to your point about this trend over the past few years. And it shows you what's happened between just the years of 2009 and 2012, so a three-year gap Supporting gay marriage was just 44% three years ago, now up 10 points to, or 10 percentage points to 54%. But I found this number perhaps more interesting. The poll asked, is there a gay family member or close friend in your life that you're now aware of? Back in 2009, just 49% said yes. But now, a full 60% in this country say they have someone close to them who is gay or lesbian. I'm curious what you two make of those numbers. I think that reflects trends we're seeing across the country. As gay Americans realize that it's okay to come out, it's okay to talk about their personal lives, it's okay to share that we, you know, we, that, that, that straight folks and gay folks have similar life experiences, hopes and dreams, affirm, uh, aspirations and challenges, that that affects the people around them, right? I think about the, the gay people I know in my lives, the lesbian couple who lives across from me, uh, across the street from me, and they're uh, sharing similar experiences as my wife and I are, right? So I think as more and more people get to know the gay and lesbian people in their lives, they realize that we're very similar in a lot of ways, and they become more open to the idea of allowing same-sex couples to be married and sharing the joys that marriage provides. Uh, Teresa, do you see kind of a correlation there between the number of people who say that they know someone gay lesbian and the number of people who seem to support gay marriage? Yeah, I think it's a bit of a misnomer to assume that because someone opposes same-sex marriage, they don't have a close friend or a family member. I think what you might see reflected there is I don't want, you know, my good friend who, you know, who's gay or, or his partner to think that I somehow don't love them or don't feel the same way I did yesterday about them because I say I oppose same-sex marriage. And, and there seems to be kind of this belief that, well, you must just not know someone. And that's just simply not true. I, the, the my wedding singer, who's one of my best friends, um, is, you know, the president of the uh, log cabin Republicans up in Washington. So I feel like that that doesn't necessarily mean that somebody is not, you know, supporting or, or loving, you know, their their same sex couple neighbors and friends. Uh, but I do think it makes them less likely to want to come out on how they believe about marriage because they don't want to be seen as as not loving or or hurtful. You wrote a piece in the Oregonian, an op-ed piece that uh, that was in the paper over the weekend. Yeah. And in that piece, uh, I'm just quoting from you here, it's, which I got a lot of comments, by the way, <laughs> as you know. It said, marriage is a unique relationship between a man and a woman meant to unite them and any children they may create. It isn't about who has the right to marry. You either fit the definition or not. The definition doesn't discriminate. Can you elaborate on that? Right. And the reason that I wrote that is a lot of times you'll see someone say, this is a civil rights issue. And on that point, I just disagree. I don't think it is a civil rights issue. Everyone does have the freedom to marry where marriage is possible. And in our definition of marriage, marriage between those of opposite sex is not possible. So that's where you run into the, is it an issue of civil rights? And, and no, I don't think it is. I think we do have some, you know, equality issue there where it's not that, you know, you're being discriminated against. It's just you don't fit the definition, just as there are lots of other couples who don't fit the definition. If you are already married, you can't marry again. Uh, if you are under 18, you can't marry. You know, if you aren't a man and a woman, you can't marry. And, and the logical reason of why we restrict it to only two people is because it only takes one man and one woman to make a child. And once you start to remove that, then I feel like you have some issues of if it's discriminatory to limit marriage, to the couple who creates children or who has the possibility or the right, you know, genders to create children, then you have the issue of, well, is it discriminatory now to limit it only to two people? What's your response to that, Thomas? I'm sure you have one. Yeah, well, that's a great question. I feel like, um, in a lot of ways, we have a shared understanding of marriage. And marriage is a universal vocabulary, right? We all know what a marriage is. It's a vow. It's a public promise. It's a lifetime commitment, right? And that's the similar kind of lifetime commitment that gay and lesbian couples want to make to each other, right? So to say that the gay and lesbian couples who are in long-term relationships, two men who've been together for 40 or 50 years and who've been supporting one another, who've been a, acting as a family, who are doing the work every day of being, marriage, of being married, to say that they should be excluded from the 
affirmation, the protections, the accountability that comes with being married in the eyes of the public, um, that just doesn't seem like it's in line with our values, uh, broadly speaking. You know, I think this is an interesting uh, place where we live, because in Washington, Oregon, where this battle is really heating up right now, this is a place where actually gays and lesbians can be involved in a domestic partnership, which is not the case in much of the country, and get the same rights as people who are married, but it's not called marriage. Mm -hmm. So my question to both of you is, are we wasting our time here? If you have the same rights, and you're just calling it something different, aren't both sides getting something out of that? You don't have to call it marriage, and you can get mar not get married, but have a domestic partnership and have all the same rights. Well, you know, listen, when, when, um, when parents think about their children, um, they think about uh, the opportunity to walk their daughter down the aisle, to dance at their son's wedding, to celebrate the love and affirmation that their children get to make when they fall in love and find someone they want to grow old with. That's marriage, right? We don't think about um, our, uh, uh, the opportunity to watch our children sign a legal contract that's notarized in the county clerk's office. That's what a domestic partnership is. It's a bundle of legal contracts. Can right? you still have a party with a domestic partnership? But what, but the it is a legal it's a legal matter that is being argued here, right? You want the the legal right to get married, which could be in a church or could be on the steps of a courthouse. Yes, and for some people they choose to be married in a church, and some people choose to be married outside, and some people choose to be married in a courthouse. But we all know what a marriage is. To call it something else is to say that 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 relationship, that commitment, that love is less than, different than the relationship and love and commitment that is between a straight couple. So, and, I, and also, I'm a straight guy. I'm married to my wife. We've been together eight years. I'll say, I mean, I don't know about you, Teresa. I wouldn't trade my marriage for a domestic partnership. I have some straight friends who are in a domestic partnership, so they made that choice. But I see it as what you said, it's different. It's not that it's not equal. It's not that it, you know, that, that other families are, are worse or bad, or, or it's not something that's so negative. It's just, why is marriage only between a man and a woman? And for us, it's marriage is only between a man and a woman because only a man and a woman can create a child, and that's the best that's the best way to raise a child is with their biological mother and father, and it's meant to unite them together. But Teresa, aren't there lots of people who get married who have no intention of having a baby? Absolutely, there are people like that. And that's a valid marriage, And, and that it? is a valid marriage. And the reason is, it's we're not saying that children validate a marriage, that you're not really married until you have kids. It's just that though those two parts that can make a child, that's what makes a marriage. So, Do you oppose the domestic partnership laws that we already have in place here in Oregon and in Washington? We were not involved in a, in a large opposition to that, no. Uh, we actually, we did get involved in some of the legislative discussions about making sure that there were some religious exemptions and those kinds of things, yeah. So it's the word marriage and the idea behind marriage that is really the sticking point here for your organization. Yeah, I think it's the public policy of marriage. Why, why do we recognize marriage? Why does society recognize marriage? What do we recognize marriage to be? And, and what has it kind of always been? It has always been recognized as between a man and a woman. And that that is important and it's unique and it's different and deserving of its own name. Not that another relationship doesn't necessarily deserve some kind of legal contract as well or some kind of you know benefit system that we have provided here in Oregon. Okay, when we come back, we are going to talk about a very interesting phenomenon that's happened in our country, and that is people who answer polls saying they're for gay marriage, and when they go to the ballot, well, something very different happens. And welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Reggie Aki. We're here today talking about same-sex marriage and the debate that is raging right here in the Northwest and, of course, across the country. Joining us today, Teresa Harkey, Communications Director for the Oregon Family Council, and Thomas Wheatley, Director of Organizing for Freedom to Marry. Okay, so right before the break, we were talking about the number of states that have rejected same-sex marriage when voters have gone to this issue on the ballot. We have a map that shows you just how many states have rejected same-sex marriage. All the ones that you see there in the orange color have already done so, including, of course, Oregon. And so we're talking about 32 states, essentially, that have done this. Time and time again, when voters have gone to the polls, they've said, we don't want this. And yet, we've already shown you earlier in the show these poll numbers that show that the majority of Americans are in favor of same-sex marriage. What is going on here? Well, times are changing. 
Right, so things are changing rapidly. And so uh, certainly we've seen a lot of votes on this issue, and we've also seen a lot of progress on this issue. We now have six states across the country where committed long-term couples who are in same-sex relationships can be married legally in addition to the District of Columbia. We have several states that will be on the ballot this year, and I think this growth, which is really in the last you know, three or four years that we've seen from the polling, demonstrates that we're in a position now to change that tide and demonstrates that every day more and more Americans are thinking about this issue. And I think reflecting on a value that matters to us, the golden rule, right, which is about treating other people as, as we want to be treated. And that includes allowing committed gay and lesbian couples to be joined in civil marriage. So, Teresa, this is why I think the Northwest is going to play such a big role in this, because when this hits the ballot, and we expect that it, w that it will in Washington to see if it overturns yeah. gay marriage there, if it does succeed, if gay marriage ends up prevailing, it would be the first state that would do so in our country. Right. So, do you expect that this trend will continue, that people will say one thing to the pollsters and say another when they get to the actual ballot? If anything trends like it does in history, then yes, because what we have seen is the states that do have gay marriage, that has been passed either through the legislature or by activist courts. So. It never, as you said, never by a vote of the people have they affirmed, yes, we want to redefine marriage to include same-sex couples. We still believe that it should be between one man and one woman. Now, you talked about polling, and one of the problems that we've seen with polling is if you ask someone, do you think that same-sex marriage should be illegal or should it be legal, people are, are going to be a little confused by that because there's a, there's a negative connotation with illegal. You know, is there some kind of government sanction on those who are same-sex couples who want to get married? People don't want that. No, we don't want you thrown in jail or fined or something. You know, it's, no, we, you know, we want you to be free to live how you want to live, um, but we don't think marriage should be redefined. So you get a lot more accurate polling if you ask specifically, do you think marriage should be defined as between a man and a woman? Interesting. Uh, I want to talk to you about, of course, this major announcement that President Obama just made last month saying that he is now in favor of same-sex marriage. We have a, a soundbite from him, and then, of course, we'll also hear from Mitt Romney on the other side. Members of my own staff who are in incredibly committed, monogamous relationships, same-sex relationships, who are raising kids together. You know, Malia and Sasha, they've got friends whose parents are same-sex couples. That I'm in favor of traditional marriage between a man and a woman, and I don't favor civil union or gay marriage. I'm curious where you two are on this. Do you think this is going to end up by November being a big enough issue that it could change who people vote for in the election, or are they going to vote for their stomachs? We're still in a pretty bad economy in this country. I don't know that it'll have a large effect. I think a lot of supporters of, of President Obama um, might have already, the, they themselves supported same-sex marriage. Uh, we, we, we might see some issue among minority voters who tend to not support same-sex marriage. Uh, in places like swing states like North Carolina, which is the most recent, um, they just passed a ban on, on same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. It could affect. Will it have a great effect? I don't think so. I don't think that most voters count this among the number one reason they're going to vote for a president. Thomas, do you think it's going to end up supporting or hurting President Obama? I think overall this is a net benefit for the president and for his reelection campaign. I mean, he has modeled for the public his own personal journey, his conversation with his uh, with the first lady and with his children, with the people in his lives in his life who are gay and lesbian, and spoken honestly about where he is, um, and you know with. Uh, strong public support all across the country with majorities of support among Democrats as well as among um, independents. We see that this is a net benefit on a political side as well. And I think the other thing is that uh, following the president's announcement, we've seen significant short-term boosts as well, particularly among communities of color. So research showing that um, folks of color, along with white folks, people across the political spectrum are are moving forward on this issue, coming through their own decisions, their own journey, and coming to realize that they support civil marriage for gay and lesbian couples. We only have a few seconds left. I did want to ask you, Teresa, after you wrote the Oregonian uh, opinion piece and got a lot of reaction, and you said in the piece that you have a lot of love for the gay people who are in your life. Yeah. What is their opinion of your opinion? <laughs> um, I think a lot of them just are respectful. They, they can agree to disagree, or a lot of them don't care about the issue. For them personally, it's just not a big issue, um, but they they know what I do, and you know it's it has nothing to do with our friendship. They know my belief system, and it has nothing to do with our friendship. I wonder what you think of that, Thomas. 
Well, I mean, I can't speak to your relationships with your friends, but I do know that um, when the my straight friends get the chance to talk to the gay and lesbian people in their lives and ask questions, you know, what is different? Well, how does it feel different to be in a domestic partnership versus a marriage? Why is it that gay and lesbian couples want to marry? That they find that um, that we want to marry for similar reasons, right? And so I think that's a very helpful conversation for us to all be having. All right, now it is time, and I once again, I want to thank both of you for. Straight Talk returns in two weeks on Saturday, June 23rd at 6.30. We're off next week because of U.S. Open Golf. We hope we'll see you then. I want to thank Teresa Harkey and Thomas Wheatley, our guests this week, to discuss gay marriage. It'll be very interesting to see where this goes from here. Thank you again. And thank you for watching. I'm Reggie Aki. Hope you have a great night.